everyone. Thank you. Uh, I want to start with this thing. This is very easy. LinkedIn seems daunting. It's very easy. The key to your profile to start is consistency and content. That's it. LinkedIn, I think you've seen over the last couple years, LinkedIn has changed. So LinkedIn started as strictly a recruitment platform. It was where you went to find somebody who wants a job or for yourself to get a job. During COVID, when the world saw the world intermingle between what was happening at our homes and what was happening at work, LinkedIn merged into a social platform. You see people on there now st sharing stories of, you know, working from home, what it means to be a working mom, what that means for their job, what it means to take time off work and away from the job. There's a lot more short form diary that's happening on the LinkedIn platform. What this means for you, for all of you, is that if you aren't engaging on the platform or ways to people to get to know you and learn your reputation, you're not using the platform effectively. Especially in the jobs that you're in, reputation is pretty much the thing that's gonna keep you employed or not employed. So let's chat a little bit about LinkedIn. Again, it's very easy, consistency is key. So let's see, <clears throat> oh, my famous, build slide. Uh, LinkedIn's big. This is what this slide says. It's 810 million users on the platform. I can tell you anytime anybody's going to figure out whether they want to work for you, whether they want you to work for them, if they believe in your company, if they believe in you, everyone is going to LinkedIn to look at you before they work for you, before they work with you, or before you work for them. They're checking out your profile. I can guarantee it 100%. If you don't have one, if it's not up to date, automatically your trust factor goes down. So your profile is essentially your story. Um, obviously, the number one thing is a clear, concise photo, a recent photo. If you don't have a recent photo, this is like going on Tinder and you show up at the date and you're like, you don't look like that anymore. I automatically don't trust you get a profile shot that is up to date, that shows me who you are. So when I come to meet you, I already feel that I trust you because I've already seen your face. Without a photo on here, I don't believe that you exist. I think it's some sort of bot or somebody else that can be up there. Make sure you have a photo. I know out in the hallway they're doing photos today. Take two seconds, get an updated photo. If you change or grow, I had mine up from when I was like, 40, I'm like, okay, I'm 48 now. Maybe I need to get on that. So this is really, really important. This is where the trust starts. The other thing you have to think about is a profile summary. And this is not just about, this is what I've done in my career. This is my career. This is who I am. This is my reputation. This is where people get to know who you are. And what I always say to my team, just in the, in the marketing side of things in our world is, what do you want to be known for? When you walk out of a room, what do you want people to be left with feeling? And that should emulate in your profile summary. When people read this, I wanna know what you give a shit about, what you care about, who you are. I'm trying to get a really quick blanket understanding of who it is of this person that I'm about to engage with. Make sense? Second part, include relevant experience and interests. So like I said before, LinkedIn just used to be a recruitment platform. It was just stick up your recruiting. What is your background? What is your past employment? This is what do you care about? What are your interests? We have massive targeting on LinkedIn. And I could tell you, if you're all lawyers in this room or in that law firm affiliation, you are a target. We can target lawyers on LinkedIn. And so if anybody is trying to reach out to find specific lawyers, they're going under interest. So I don't just want a lawyer, but I want a lawyer that's interested in family law. I want a lawyer that's interested in soccer. I'm just being facetious. But the interest level now of being able to target, we're no longer targeting by demographic, gender, geolocation. It is now skills, interest groups taglines, hashtags. It makes it a lot easier for people to locate you and figure out who you are based on what you're interested in. Also, if I'm wanting to work with you and I see that we have a level of interest that's similar to mine, again, I'm already feeling comfortable to be reaching out to you. Interesting and engaging content. This is where people fall apart on LinkedIn. They put up something on LinkedIn, they read something out, they reshare it, they repost it, 
no context, no connotation, no how you feel about it. What, why is it up on your site? Why are you putting this on your profile? If you don't have a reason for you putting it up on your profile, don't put it up. If you're putting, sharing content of something you've read in LinkedIn or something that you've written, you need to tell me why. Why does it matter to you? Why is it up there on your site? I'm going through your site to understand who you are. And if this is not up here, I'm going to be looking through your content to see what you really care about. And if you'll go on to my content on my LinkedIn, you'll see I have a lot of business things, right? I run a, uh, um, a big sales team in Canada for enterprise for LinkedIn. So a lot of things that go on within the sales world, a lot of things that go on on a customer focus stand base. You'll also see that I'm, I work on a board of Aura Freedom, a human trafficking organization that I speak fluently and constantly about on this site. I speak about, you know, being a mom, working mom, what that feels like, but with a 21-year-old who just wants all my money, by the way. Um, it's a very different working mom at this age than three-year-olds. Um, so these are the things that I want people to know who I am. Most people, after they've met me, after they've seen my LinkedIn, they're like, oh, right, you know, you wrote about this, or you care about that, or you automatically, my reputation with them is gone up a level because they've seen this as it is. Your reputation on LinkedIn will always be more important than a Facebook or an Instagram. You're not sharing cat videos on here. This is you showing up as your best self for your livelihood, your customers, your clients, and your potential employers. Not only that, people who want to work for you. I can tell you this next generation, they do not just want to get a job and just go work for anybody. They are looking at companies. They're looking at all the employees. They're looking at the CEOs. What does the CEO stand for? What does he value? Is that a company that I want to go work for? What is the chief marketing officer? What does she stand for? Is that somewhere I want to go and work for? This is reputation building. And if you're not doing it, you're missing out. This is something a lot of people don't know about. So on LinkedIn, Right now, you can see a little button on yours or somebody else's, you can hit connect. That means you're now connected, you can talk and message them. But a lot of times, the way that you're gonna build momentum on LinkedIn is if you turn, and you'll see it at the bottom of your settings, which I can show you after, you go from connect to creator. That means people can just go on and follow you. They don't have to connect with you and wait for you to check it out, make sure it goes back. Why does that matter? Well, the more followers you have and the more things that you post, obviously the longitude of your breadth and depth is going to be a lot better. So if you switch to creator mode, people can just follow you. But if you switch to creator mode, you better have something to say. And this is where the consistency in the content comes in. When I say consistency, I don't mean every day. Once a week, once every two weeks, but you gotta figure out what you wanna say. And it isn't just about you know, went to a Clio Cloud conference. Woo, super fun. Great, you went there. What did you learn? Top three things I learned. Things I didn't know about myself that I learned. People want to know content. Content that's going to help them. Ta content that they're actually interested in reading and digesting. So think about when you're going to be a creator, what do you want to share? What do you want to say? And sometimes even for myself, I will lay out sort of like a content calendar for the month. I'm like, listen, I'm traveling here, I'm going here, I've got Thanksgiving in Canada today, by the way, so happy Thanksgiving to me and Ariel back there. Um, but I write out sort of what are the holidays that are coming up? What's happening at work? What are some things that I'm up against? What have I talked to my executive coach about in terms of how to help and motivate my team through a really macroeconomic time? So I will lay out sort of a calendar for myself about the things that are happening in my life, and then I try and pinpoint like who's gonna care about what? And what is the story that I'm trying to tell, even from a few of those things? You're all in a very, very precarious situation in the jobs that you hold, most of you, because you are so reputation-based that if you do not have a good reputation even one time, automatically people are pulling away a little bit. This is an opportunity for you to be seen how you wanna be seen. Become a creator create content that matters, and share it out to people so they get to know who you are. This is what I had just said. So this is where you'll see it in settings and privacy. You can change it from connect to follow. And this is gonna actually, you won't have to manage as many connects, right? Sometimes you'll look and you've got 58 connects in there. You don't know who they are. You're checking to see if you like them or not. Just follow. This is not 
you know, you're not going to get a naked photo sent to you by somebody on LinkedIn. It just doesn't happen. We're a very, very, very trusted platform. We've I've all the times I've been at the company, there have been, I think, a couple of spam alerts, too, maybe in the whole time that I've been there. So no one's going to follow you and then send you something inappropriate. These are all business professionals that are living on this site. So there's no harm in someone following you, even if you don't know who they are. Just think of it as you standing up here, you're all following me right now as I'm speaking. Think of it in that same context. Commenting and dialogue. So here's another way for you to build people on your professional site. If you have someone that you follow, or a peer or a colleague, comment on them. If they've shared something or they've said something, like their post and comment on it. The minute you comment on it, the algorithm reads that that is something you like, will start showing you content related to that, and that comment will now be seen by all the, that person's followers all the way down. So if somebody else is on their site and they're reading it and they see what you've had to say and they like you, now they're going to you. But again, if they get to you and there's no content and the photo is crap and you have nothing to say, I, I'm gone. So just the devil's in the details, right? You can go out and get many people following your site and you can get a big followership or you can get a small one. But again, if the content on there is nothing that anybody's going to care about or that you even care about, don't do it. The other thing that you can do, I am a big proprietor of this, is sometimes when somebody's posting something, if I disagree with it, I will say that. I will say, I feel really strongly that I, I don't agree with your position. And I'll make my comment about what it is. You should see what happens when there is a counterintuitive <laughs> back and forth between people. The dialogue begins, you start getting followers, you're engaging in a community, you're engaging with different people. So don't be afraid if it's something you don't, don't disagree just to disagree, but if you do feel strongly about it, say that. And that's how you actually begin a business dialogue between people to learn and understand better. Ever since, I mean, I was a big, Twitter person. Not so much anymore. The platform is not for me anymore. But I was like, that's what I lived and died over was Twitter. What's happening? Who's talking about it? Following consistently. What's happening in the news? Politics. I was all there. I've switched to LinkedIn now. And I can tell you that for me being on LinkedIn and seeing the accountability of a lot of people on this site and knowing where they work and who they are and what they stand for, it's a really, really important part of my life, not just in business, but in my life in general. LinkedIn groups. This is another really important way. Again, this is just a follow. This is not exhaustive. It seems like a lot of things I'm telling you right now, it's like either one click or a post. It's nothing that's going to take you a long amount of a long time. The only thing that's going to take you time is if you do decide to do content, what do you want to say? That's really it's going to be the majority of the time, sucker. But this is, there's LinkedIn groups. There's all different groups that you can click on here and follow. You'll see lots of people engaging, talking about what's happening in your business, talking about what's happening in a business that you're not interested in or are interested in or want to be interested in. Joining these groups will expand your network significantly. Also, on your site, once you've joined a group, it will list that you're part of that group on your LinkedIn profile. So now I'm able to go onto your LinkedIn profile and be like, what do they care about? What groups are they in? Are we in similar groups? Are we in opposite groups? So this is just showing up as your best self and telling people what you care about. And this is unfortunately the way of the social world. I'm the worst hashtagger ever. I hashtag everything. Hashtag dinner, hashtag drunk, hashtag not drunk, hashtag. So just this is the way that you expand. The algorithm will read hashtags. So much like in Google search, when you think of Google search, the way that marketers can go into Google search and figure out you know, who of all the people that just searched for cameramen, it will, they can actually, then the algorithm will read and find this. If you have a hashtag up here and there's a million other hashtags that are similar, we'll all go into the same vein. So if I go onto LinkedIn, and I decide I want to look up lawyers who smile, hashtag lawyers who smile, and I type that in, 
it will show me every single post of anyone who's ever posted that lawyers will smile. I can see their posts. I can see what they share. I can see what we have in common. So I can search people and topics based on hashtags, which is a really, really big way that the next generation is searching for jobs, for people, for customers, for clients. So when you put something on, think about your hashtag. And when you go to put in the hashtag, a whole bunch will come up because it's already user generated to see if it's something that you want to put in there. Keep it in mind, it's the way you expand your reach, especially if it's something that's already a hashtag that already exists. And it's a great way for people to be able to find you within groups and interests. So this is where it gets tricky. And this is where you di differentiate yourself. We have a lot of people. Right now, we have something called thought leadership. So there's a lot of CEOs, especially in the financial sector, that have come up with beautiful posts about what's happening in the financial world, the crash, inflation. They're posting, and their companies are paying to boost out their content. I can tell you the ones that have not taken the time to be very prescriptive about their content, it's doing them harm and their company harm. So think about your content. This is the four ways that we think about content on LinkedIn. And again, think of this in, that, in the context of the content calendar I was talking about. Industry focused, brand focused, product focused, people focused. So when you've done out your little content calendar, where you're doing, what you're happening, what's happening at work, what's happening with clients, what are the things that are keeping you up at night, bucket them. So that you know, is this an industry focused or is this brand? Oh, you know what? This is people focused. And I've put up three other people focused things this month. I probably need to veer off and come up with something brand focused. Does that make sense? Cool. So this is just an example of somebody who's doing it really well. So this is Sally Krawcheck. She's the CEO co-founder of Elvest. But she addresses everything from gender disparities to wealth financial. She has a specific audience, but she stays true on her content all the time. And you'll see the way that she posts. She's got pictures. It, also, this is the other thing. It doesn't have to be fancy. My chief client officer at LinkedIn is him on an iPhone going, hi guys, thought I'd let you know what's, it's content. You know, the old days of TV, we say content is king. It still really is. You essentially are becoming an influencer for yourself. So if you have something to say, find a way to say it. And if you don't, find out something to say. Here's another one the evangelist, Laisha Ward. She's the EVP um, external engagement officer at Target. So she has brand values. She has um, leadership, women in, of color in leadership. So everyone knows that this is what she stands for. Every post that she has will come back to why it matters. Not only why it matters for her, but why it matters at Target, why it matters at the organization that she's in. You are an ambassador of yourself and the company for which you work. You need to show up that way. And you need to show up how you would want to be looked at in an office setting, at work, with customers, with clients. Do people respect you? They trust your reputation? Do they think coming to you for advice, you're actually going to give them great advice? Well, if I go onto your site and there's nothing on there, I don't know. I'm starting from scratch. It's an opportunity to already be in the door. This is something that uh, changed my career. Um, how do you search for people? You've got 810 million people on LinkedIn. How the hell do you search for anyone? Sure, do I know someone who knows someone who knew someone, or I look up, I saw them in a magazine, or I saw them on somewhere else. How do I find someone? There's a separate license on LinkedIn. I don't know. Some of your companies may have it. Some may not. You can buy it individually. It's called Sales Navigator. Essentially, what this does is it gives you access to every single person on LinkedIn. And not access in terms of, you know, you're sending them a message, hey, Bob, you know, coming over for dinner. But this is how you can find anyone you need to find on LinkedIn. You can search by company. You can search by interest. You can search by hashtag. You could search by name. And through this ability, it will show you in here how many people they're connected to that you're connected to and how they're connected to them. How did they work together? Where did they work before? How do I get there? It'll show you in their past jobs 
if they've worked with anyone else that you know or through that, any shared posts you may have liked, any shared interest groups you may have, and then you have the ability to message them directly. My whole career, 27 years I've been in media, in sales, not until I got to LinkedIn. I mean, literally, I was the whole, hi, do you want to buy a billboard? Out of the red, yellow pages, right? Knew nothing about them. I knew nothing about their business at all. This cuts it down so fast. Who they are, where they worked, who they know, who I know, what they care about, what they stand for. When I'm sending a message as a re reach out as a cold call, it's a very different reach out than it is if I know absolutely nothing about them. Matter of fact, even through this, you'll see posts that they care about. All of a sudden, we have a common connection. Sales Navigator will change your ability to find customers and clients, but don't use it for stalking. So this is the best place to find your hidden allies. There are so many people that I have been on LinkedIn with that I didn't know knew someone who knew someone who knew someone to reach out. It's basically six degrees of LinkedIn bacon. This is going to help you get who you need to get to if you can't get to them. Because the way without Sales Navigator is you find their LinkedIn profile, you go to connect, hope they connect with you, see if you can message them. Through Sales Navigator, you're able to dig in through their entire profile, background, who they know, how long they've been there, comments they've said about their uh, company in the past. This insight tool will be life-changing for many of you who feel uh, compelled or need to find out other people in your space or customers or clients. Um, oh, this is what I already spoke about as well. So this is how you can get into view their full profile through Sales Navigator. The thing about LinkedIn is it's not hard. This is not hard. I'm not telling you anything that's difficult. Be yourself, have something to say, be authentic, and then you build a reputation. Consistency and content, that's it. Literally, I'm literally done. There's nothing else to tell you. It's that easy. It just seems daunting before you get there, but once you start and you have literally like two hours, you'll have your LinkedIn profile picture done, you'll have a, and ChatGPT is actually directly in the platform now, so you can start to write a profile summary about yourself and it will come in and say, eh, maybe you wanna say it like this. There's a lot of prompts to help you get there. Once it's set up, you leave it, you leave it. Maybe in six months, you know what? I'm gonna change that profile summary. I do wanna update what's happening in my life, who I am, how to be. Oh, that picture, no, I still pretty much look the same. I'm gonna leave that photo up. It's really not hard, but I can tell you it is um, really detrimental if it's not up to date and where it needs to be. That's it for me. There's questions I think Ariel's gonna have. If you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Questions? Yeah, down here, Ariel. Just one second. Oh, she's running, so I can hear you, sir. She's coming. <laughs> Linking personal uh, to law firm. L LinkedIn page for law firm to LinkedIn page person. So there's company page, and then there's personal page. So if your company has a page, I'm assuming somebody within that company will be running that company page. If you have a good enough relationship that the company supports you and you support the company, then all you would do on your page is in your profile, you would put works at with the link to your company page. Then they interspersed automatically. And then if you have something phenomenal to say and your law firm thinks it's something that's worth sharing with customers, clients, then they would reshare your post out on the company page. I don't know who manages your company page, but that would be something that's what a lot of companies are doing right now, and they're seeing higher click-through rates, we call them, than any other form. CEOs are now talking about their company and business, and company pages are reposting that content as advertisements. People are no longer like, hey, buy this, this is fancy, buy this. They're using the content of people that work for them as their advertising because they want to advertise that people that work for them care about their business and themselves. Any other questions? About your 
it's hard for me to see with the light. Oh. Hey, hi. Um, so I'm an SEO manager for law firms, and so I'm speaking um, on this from a SEO perspective. Yeah. Like, uh, are there any features or anything in LinkedIn right now that will help profiles and help uh, company pages or uh, posts show up more uh, in search engines? So there's. So the question was, he's in SEO. Is there anything on LinkedIn right now that can help push the followership of personal and company pages? So there's two things, right? You have organic on LinkedIn, which is anybody can just post, and then you have paid. Most company pages will be paying for their advertising. So personally, it's just gonna be organic. There's no way for you to move your profile for or ad followers unless you do the things that I told you about here. That's the hashtags, the LinkedIn groups, uh, posting on other people's posts, sales navigator, connecting, following, changing it to cr from um, follow mode to creator mode. That's how you're going to boost your followers on your own site. Company page is strictly through a paid search acquisition. So they will have a CMT page, it's called, which is the campaign manager within LinkedIn. And that is where all of the companies go and target who they need to target. LinkedIn is very unique in its ability to target more than any other platform because it's all first party data. There's nothing that the algorithm is like maybe telling you about who I am. I have put all that information in there myself on Facebook, on Instagram, Google. There's an algorithm that is making assumptions on who that person is. LinkedIn is all first party data. So for a company, in order to get an extension of followers. They have to have better content and they have to pay to push it out to reach the people they wanna reach. The thing about organic is you have no control over who's gonna follow you. But if you specifically are like, listen, I only want people who have kids, then you are only, through your company, only going to target people who have kids. If you're like, I only want C-suite, I only want C-suite and mass affluent, then that's the only persons you're gonna target. That's the only people that are actually gonna be able to see your ad and join your page. Does that make sense? Organic versus paid? Okay. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, link it up. Thank you.